All right, thanks a lot for um, having me here today. So um, I'm going to be presenting a piece of research that's part uh, of my PhD uh, at, uh, at Rotterdam University. However, it is already now in a USE logo uh, template, so I should uh, also say that it's also from uh, my time at Erasmus University. I work here now as a postdoc researcher at, uh, at the School of Economics. Um, and the focus of my research is uh, financing of sustainable innovation. Um, and that's something that I worked on in my research, but also a question that's already um, yeah, uh, caught me about 10 years ago when I was working still at a bank uh, as an innovation manager uh, and crowdfunding was just uh, coming up and I got really excited about it. Um, and the reason that I got excited was that I thought, wow, crowdfunders would, will be able to make different type of investment decisions than banks and they will be more willing to include kind of societal issues, more personal things, more the, the community logic that uh, Kuhn presented earlier. Um, so I tried to also within this bank uh, set, up a, set up a crowdfunding platform. So we worked on that on a couple of years, but now I'm, I'm looking at it more from an, yeah, kind of more objective scientific perspective. So, you know, wh what is actually happening when we're, when we're starting to crowdfund and how are these uh, investment decisions, um, yeah, how are they affected by kind of the new groups of investors that are coming in? And one really nice example that I, that I always remember is that one of my best friends, she knows that I'm doing research on crowdfunding, and she told me, Helen, I've now crowdfunded this, uh, this really nice uh, biological uh, chocolate company. And um, yeah, and uh, so this, uh, it's, a, it's a friend of my uh, colleague, and uh, she gave me a chocolate, and it tasted great. So of course I invested. And uh, so this is the kind of uh, thing which really uh, stuck with me. So. Um, as a user or as a consumer of, of a product, you have, you could say, a specific type of knowledge. So in this case, you, you, you know that there is at least one customer for this chocolate because it tastes really good. So you have insight into kind of the, the value proposition of a firm. How, however, of course, um, the, the chance is that people are going to call you kind of a, a more naive idealist because how would you know that this chocolate company will actually be successful in the end? So this is what I, I want to... Uh, be speaking about today. So what, what happens when users start funding? Um, so uh, the, the paper builds on literature, on some literature, which says, well, their uh, users could potentially represent a very interesting source of additional funding. Uh, and in particular uh, for startup finance, because this is a sector where even professionals are not that great at, uh, not all, it's, it's very difficult to to gauge whether an enterprise is successful, because often there's no, there's no track record, uh, there's no collateral. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a very high risk uh, area of, uh, of finance. Um, so you could say, well, let, let's bring users in as, as investors, or maybe well, they'll just come and they, they will start investing. But we don't know very much about how they make different, uh, whether they make different decisions. Um, and some of the things that, that, I, I w that we are addressing in this paper, so it's work together with uh, Friedemann Poltzin, also from USE, um, is how users have different information search efforts, so how do they overcome informational symmetries, how do they learn about the, uh, about the firm, uh, about their financial literacy, so how able are they to uh, assess the firm, and also, well, well, why actually are they investing? And the, the reason why this, why this is also relevant for policymakers is, well, you know, what should, should you be like really excited about this group entering? Is it a, an opportunity or is it something, or is it a group of investors that need to be protected? So the first time that, that in, uh, when I was working at this bank, we were one of the first that organized a workshop about crowdfunding. And one of the first uh, parties that came and, uh, and signed up for this event was the AFM, uh, which is the Dutch uh, authority, which also protects uh, consumers in the, in the financial arena. So, so this, this kind of shows where the, where the, the, the question is. Yeah, so as I said, uh, innovation finance in itself uh, is challenging due to lack of uh, track record collateral, a uh, high risk nature. And in the past decade, the crowdfunding has really emerged as a, as a kind of a new player in this field. Um, but then this question of these experienced funders, are they able to gauge the quality of the venture? And uh, within crowdfunding, um, the main uh, kind of signals that are given by the platform are a project description which describes the venture and what they're going to do with the funds. There's often a very nice video which you can watch about uh, uh, who's actually starting the venture. 
And then there's often, in case of uh, debt or equity finance, there's an investment sheet, which gives you more the details on expected profit loss, um, uh, m yeah, more details about, uh, yeah, which, which help you kind of uh, gauge the risk and the potential profit of the venture. Um, yeah, so then how do these user crowdfunders overcome informational asymmetries? So uh, one piece of literature that we looked at is, is the user uh, innovation literature. Uh, and you see these users kind of, you know, becoming more and more involved and now also even involved in financing. And one of the reasons that uh, the user innovation literature says that uh, uh, users become more involved is that they have actually kind of a unique bit of information. Um, and this is a very local information, so it's information about their use, uh, their interaction with a certain product. And it's also kind of sticky information, so it's very uh, kind of difficult to uh, transfer to others. So it's very much embedded in your experience with this, uh, with this company. Um, and the other thing that, uh, that the literature says, well, there's like a lot of users who all have a bit of insight into this firm and they all have a, a bit of knowledge and there's kind of task partitioning uh, to solve kind of challenges within, um, within a firm and to be more entrepreneurial. So I'm not the expert on this. We had others here who were speaking more about uh, user entrepreneurship. But when I read this more from a finance perspective, I said, hey, this could be uh, also a driver behind uh, user crowdfunding especially if you are uh, 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 trying to screen firms which are very in opaque, very intransparent. Uh, actually being a user of that firm can actually give you uh, relevant insights to say something about what the success of this firm could be. Um, and in a way you could say, you know, a successful crowdfunding campaign is like, you know, solving a puzzle together. Everyone puts in a little bit of money, and if there's enough people who say, okay, you know, I think this is good, you, yeah, you solved perhaps the challenge of saying, well, we together we think this is, uh, we, we want to take this risk. Um, uh, th this is, I guess, kind of a, a positive story about uh, the hypothesis, which is that uh, we think that user funders put less effort into their information search than non-user funders because they have this proprietary information. Um, you could also uh, use kind of a less positive theory, which is from more the finance perspective, is that people who are familiar with an enterprise, uh, they exert uh, they, uh, something which uh, financial uh, researchers call the home bias effect. So because they are familiar with the enterprise, you know, they get very rosy glassed about this enterprise and they're not going to look for information because they, they trust this brand, you know. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's like holding uh, in the Netherlands, holding Unilever, holding Shell, holding these brands where you go every year to the, to the stock market meeting and you get a free cup of coffee. And, you know, like really this feeling that, uh, you know, I, I know, I know that these guys are doing good work. Um, so, yeah, so that's also the, the reason why I think we should look at different literatures, because if you look at only from a financial perspective, you're probably going to say this is probably kind of maybe bad that this is happening. That also that they put less effort into the information search. Um, and then the second question is, well, users, if they're coming from kind of the, the group of people who are involved with the firm and, and then start funding, they're less likely to be kind of the professional, uh, professional investors. Uh, so w this could mean, you know, maybe alarm bells. Uh, will they be able to actually understand the information that they're getting, how, you know, their absorptive capacity, their ability to judge uh, really the quality of this enterprise? Um, However, if you look at the literature, there's kind of two reasons why uh, also there we can be more positive. Uh, on the one hand, if you look at the financial literacy literature, you see that um, more illiterate households are less likely to invest in stock markets. So there's kind of self-selection uh, on the stock market. And there's a little bit of research done on uh, kind of the wisdom of the crowd in funding. Uh, and um, uh, th this study by, uh, by Molik and Nanda, they looked at a, a very big uh, group of uh, theater projects on Kickstarter and they compared the decision making uh, by the crowd to decision making by experts. And what they found is that uh, the, the quality of the uh, products, projects uh, uh, funded by the crowd was not less than that of experts, so it was very similar. Only the crowd was willing to fund more projects. So they were able to kind of expand the amount of projects that were realized without loss of quality. So you could say in a way, you could say that's actually a really good result, but it's in the context of theater again. 
uh, where it's about being users and, and the success is uh, whether the play got good reviews. This is like, you know, whether the chocolate tastes good. It doesn't say anything about whether this is a profitable firm on the long term if you're going to hold debt or equity in a company. Um, but anyway, so what we hypothesize from this is that actually uh, the users of an enterprise that decide to fund, uh, they will actually self-select based on their ability to, uh, to fund. Um, well, and then another part, which maybe I'm going to do a bit quicker then, is that uh, a lot of these ventures are also have some kind of social motive. So you see a lot of firms which are, uh, on the one hand, innovative, uh, engaging their users, uh, almost like kind of social movements, trying to create uh, cultural change, um, and then doing a crowdfund campaign to make something be realized. And you see, there is some literature saying, well, actually crowdfunding is particularly successful for social or sustainable firms. And the arguments that are used, well, there's other types of motivation. Uh, also, people trust these firms more uh, because, you know, they're trying to save the world. So, you know, why would they uh, uh, be fraudulent? Uh, like very, uh, um, and the fact that, uh, that, that kind of this impact motivation plays a role can mean that also that this information search will be altered because if you have a different uh, goal of funding, uh, you will also be looking for different things. Um, at the same time, you know, knowing whether an, uh, uh, an enterprise will be impactful is very difficult. And often people are um, guided by the narrative that is provided by the enterprise itself. Uh, uh, Kuni wrote about it in a sharing economy, you know, people say, well, sharing is caring and it's great. And, 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 and that's then, you know, that's their impact basically uh, for, for the general public. So it's very much driven by the media whether, um, yeah, whether someone will then screen something as being impactful or not. Um, so, so what, what we think is that this impact motivation and these users are kind of intertwined and might actually be driving the relationship of, uh, of, of lo looking, uh, of putting in less information search effort. And similarly, um, the, the lower financial literacy of impact motivation funders, here we expect the self-selection to be different because if they're not so financially motivated, then why would they care so much about their financial literacy? So we, th we expect it there to be kind of interaction. Um, so what we did uh, is we looked at a, a very large uh, campaign, crowdfunding campaign uh, by Pirby. They raised, um, it was a Dutch campaign in 2016. O over a thousand funders um, funded it, including someone in the back I just uh, found out. Um, and probably I should have funded it as well, just to keep kind of on track uh, with this uh, campaign. Um, yeah, it was highly successful. It was kind of the best project of 2016. They funded this amount in a week. Uh, and they were also very proud that it was funded by users. Uh, and we took this as an example a little bit also uh, by coincidence because I got in touch with her and thought, hey, this is interesting because you can really track user levels on the one hand and then we have this crowdfund campaign and it turned out it was a very, yeah, a very large funder group. Um, yeah, so this was their crowdfunding website. So there was a nice video. Uh, there was an investment sheet here, which I should have shown you and a product uh, description. Um, yeah, they wanted to get uh, three, uh, 300k and they got over 2,000. Um, what we then did is straight after the campaign, we sent them a survey to ask them uh, what information did they look at. Uh, we got the investment data from the, uh, of this campaign and we also, from Peerby, we got all the user data. So these are kind of really tracking how many times they... Um, yeah, actually Peerby, I didn't explain what Peerby was. It's a sharing platform so you can share uh, things with uh, neighbors and we can actually track, uh, we, we are able to track per person who funded and was a Peerby user, how often they interacted with the platform. So they tried to lend something or they tried to borrow something, uh, whether, yeah, whether it was successful. So, so these type of things we, we tracked uh, and we did an analysis and then we shared this with, with, the, with the Peerby and OPC in a workshop. Um, what we found in the analysis is that indeed the users uh, exert lower information effort. At, at the same time, we cannot yet uh, define whether this is due to local sticky information. This is still kind of the mechanism below, but there could be other mechanisms. Um, we indeed find similar financial literacy between users and non-users, uh, but we don't find an interaction effect with uh, impact motivation. We do find that impact motivation lowers information effort. But these are two independent effects, and this effect is actually even bigger than the user effect. 
Uh, and what was interesting is that uh, the, uh, there is interaction between the impact motivation and user uh, users in the realm of financial literacy. So if you split the group into financially motivated users and impact motivated users, you find the um, yeah, low financial literacy for the impact motivated users and high financial literacy for the financially motivated users. So w when we were trying to kind of grapple, uh, you know, well, what does this really mean? Uh, this is where we got to now as into kind of visualizing the different type of groups and that's also how we got kind of got the title. Um, so there seems to be kind of an, uh, yeah, kind of you can make it into four groups of, of funders where uh, perhaps the, the most interesting one uh, which I want to look at for time now is that there's this group of yeah, kind of insiders which have both high financial literacy and they are a user. So they're actually, the, they have the highest, display the highest financial literacy. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of an interesting, uh, kind of perhaps positive result of the study. Um, and at the same time, uh, yeah, you also get kind of more the idealists with, with, with low investment experience, uh, low financial literacy, the, 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 the users who are kind of really trying more to, um, yeah, who, who are just less informed as part of their investment decision. Um, yeah, so until now, so what? Uh, uh, saying that uh, this title, of course, I changed after the morning when everyone had a so what slide, so I also needed a so what slide. Um, uh, well, the first thing is, of course, this is just one case, right? So let's not uh, make a policy, uh, uh, ch change total policy on this. We, we are working on adding two more cases to this, which are not platforms, but two different types of uh, uh, campaigns, also run on uh, one planet crowd. But uh, in any case, what, what we can say until now is that there is this diversity of investor type and motivation, and also that there's kind of new investor type, so they have less investment experience. Uh, but their financial literacy is on the average not so much lower uh, except for the impact motivated user funders who actually also we found in the analysis are often female so there there's like this, this this kind of new group of less financially literate female investors um, joining the scene uh, and on the other hand you have this kind of group of kind of savvy financially motivated insiders that could perhaps deliver high quality screening for innovation because if they're not less financially literate and they also have experience as a user with an enterprise, this could actually lead to perhaps a better uh, screening of uh, whether this is a good investment or not. And one thing that I think this means for practice is that, well, uh, if you're looking into kind of, you know, uh, investor protection, you need to also think about, well, what are their goals in investment? And often people are thinking just about, you know, financials, getting your money back, which is important. But if you are investing for impact, for societal impact, I think, uh, there should be also a much better developed kind of metrics or screening or education on how you actually do this without just following the narrative of an enterprise which says, well, we're going to uh, change the world. Um, so so, so there, th I think this is like one, one area where, where, where we can think more about um, and, and what this study um, shows us. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm.